Hi, this is Joe with Prep Agent, and I'm here today with my friend Ray. Hi, Ray. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Fine. So, you came to me with a few concepts. You want to go over Truth in Lending, RESPA, the Sherman Antitrust Act, and Fair Housing, correct? Yes. Perfect. So we're going to go over some of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the concepts really quick, and then we're going to do some questions together. How's that sound? All righty. Okay, good. Okay, and here we go. Let's just get right into it. Okay, so first, we got truth in lending. What's the purpose of it? I'm guessing so lenders don't uh, try to play buyers, you know? So have you ever gotten a loan on a house? Have you bought a house yet? No, I have not. Okay, so um, what you do, it's so a I very have... scary process. Agreed. Yeah, it is for everybody the first time. If you haven't bought it yet, it's a very terrifying process. And the lenders come up with all this paperwork, a lot of paperwork, boom, right on your table. And they say, and you look at all these papers, they say, read it all. Are you really going to read all the papers? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no, nobody does. You know, and then you get your fees, and you're like, what's this? And basically they say, well... We forgot to include our we screwed you tax, our ha-ha charge, and you're a sucker fee. Okay? And, and then you're like, what the hell happened? So truth in lending was there to stop that, essentially. It was okay. there to say, you know what? You know, Ray's new to getting a home. She's new to getting a loan. It has to be clear. You can't lump a million things on her and then just say, oh, well, did we not mention this? Oh, well, we forgot the ha-ha charge that we screwed you tax and the, you're the sucker fee. You know, they, we forgot to include all that, and you should have known. Well, no, you shouldn't have known because you're just an average buyer who's first time buying their house. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. So when you hear words like what's on the board, the purpose of the act is to promote the informed use of credit. It sounds a little odd, but that's why I wrote, when you use your credit, you are getting a loan. It's basically a more complex way of saying of you just getting a loan. That's what you use your credit for, to get a loan. Right. And it's basically to make sure you, as the borrower, are informed. Because as you said, you're going to be very nervous when you see those papers and you just up signing everything and signing your life away. Right. So you hear this term a lot, TILA. That's abbreviation for Truth in Lending Act. Okay, so it doesn't place limits on the rates of interest. It, those are done by state usury laws. What's usury? Do you know what usury is? No, I don't. You know what loan sharking is? Uh, a little bit. Just tell me. <laughs> You're in a very desperate situation. Okay? You need, let's call it $10. Just to use easy numbers. I mm -hmm. say, fine, you could borrow $10, but every day you don't pay me, I'm going to tack on another $10. So in five days, you're going to owe me $60. Okay. Okay. That's not reasonable, is it? No. That's usury. It's simple terms uh, called loan sharking, you know, where the mobsters used to do it to people. I guess they'll do it to this day. Is when you're taking advantage of somebody who's in a desperate situation and you're lending them money, but you're putting incredibly unfair interest rates on them to pay back. Things are not realistic and things are just asking for trouble. Right. Okay. So truth and lending doesn't put limits on that. People think it does, but it doesn't. Truth and lending is more about, well, what it says. Be truthful when you make a loan. It doesn't put limits on how much you could charge an interest. The states do that. So far, so good. If you have questions, stop me. So we'll do, when we do the questions, we'll go over this stuff again. Okay, and here you see the disclosures. You hear something called an annual percentage rate. You see it here on the board, annual percentage rate? Mm-hmm. What's that all about? What I think the annual percentage rate. Um, uh, I am so horrible at this. That's why I was like, I want to go over it because I feel like I know nothing about this. Well, that's why we're going to uh, learn. You'll be fine. I mean, the percentage rate for the year? Well, let me ask I'm you. I'm guessing that. since it's annual? No, that's absolutely right. It's a, it's a percentage rate that you're paying for the year. So the percentage of the loan oh. amount that you're going to be paying. So the annual percentage rate is supposed to lump everything involved in getting the loan. And it says there, um, the, the credit, the, the fees in included, everything, okay, into one lump sum. 
It's not the same as the nominal rate. That's the rate named the note. Remember that. Nominal named. Nominal named. Do you know what the, the note is? The note? Yeah. Um, well, uh, basically stating the debt owed, a promise to pay the debt back. Right. The note, exactly, is the promissory note. So you, you have been studying, you're doing well. It's that evidence of the debt. Right. Okay. And so the annual percentage rate is not the same as the note. The annual percentage rate is a more all-encompassing number. Okay. And we bring this up because that's what's going to help them be truthful when they make a loan. Truth in lending. Right. Right? Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Next thing you ask me about is RESPA. Super easy. RESPA. RESPA. People love to say the word RESPA. It sounds very fancy, doesn't it? <laughs> a little. Yeah. But very few agents actually know what it has to do with. What RESPA has to do is mostly as per your exam and when you start practicing real estate, it has to do with settlement services. Do you know what settlement services are? Um, no. Settlement services refer to everything to help you settle the deal to get a house. So it could be a lender, an inspector, all these kind of things. Okay. Let me put it to you like this. I'm your agent, okay? And I recommend Bob the lender to do your financing. Why mm -hmm. did I recommend Bob? In your mind, you trust me, you like me, so why am I recommending Bob? Because you think he's pretty good? Exactly. Say with more confidence, you're correct. Okay? Because mm -hmm. you think because you trust me, so you think he's good. What if you found out that I've never met Bob before? In fact, I just found out his name was Bob. But he was giving me two hundred bucks in order to send you to him. How would you feel? Mm. Uh, I would then feel like, okay, you only sent me to him because you would get paid. And you are not happy, know. correct? Right. Because your whole financing is involved, your ability to get this house involved, and I'm sacrificing that so I can get my 200 bucks. Right. I, I'm more interested in my 200 bucks than you being treated correctly by a lender I trust. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes complete sense. So RESPA is there to prevent that from happening. Okay. okay. So it eliminates kickbacks and referral fees that could unnecessarily increase the cost of the settlement services. So I may upcharge you a little bit in order to compensate for the 200 bucks Bob gave me. But that's the gist of it. It's there to be honest about the whole thing. Here, settlement services include originating the loan, um, an attorney, real estate agents, inspectors, mortgage documents, appraisals, a whole slew of different things here. But you get the gist of it. It's there to make sure you understand everybody involved in the transaction and what they're getting. Right. Does that make sense? So it's really easy. The big thing I want you to remember is RESP is there to prevent kickbacks. Okay. Okay. See, we've got it here. There's that word, kickbacks. <clears throat> All right? So you know what kickbacks are, essentially, right? That's that 200 bucks. Yes, I get Yeah. Yeah, like if you try to take somebody out to eat or something like that. Exactly. Okay, next thing you asked me about is the Sherman Antitrust Act. This has to do with everybody being fair and competitive in an open market, okay? And I'll explain what I mean by that in a little more depth, okay? Sherman Antitrust Act, landmark federal statute of the United States antitrust law or competition law passed by Congress in 1890. So this thing's really old, okay? Mm -hmm. So basically it's there to make sure there's free market co competition. We'll get a little more in detail about it. Have you ever heard of this, the Sherman Antitrust Act? Yes, I have heard of it. I'm just not as, like, I don't really remember all the details of it. So what do you know? Let's start with that. What do you know about it? The law where two agents from two different firms can't try to, like, uh, like claim different areas? Or am I off? I think no, I'm you're off. totally on. You're doing great. You're doing great. 
Um, we're just going to clarify it a little more for you, but you're definitely on the right path with that. Okay. So let's look at a little more detail. So here's what you were talking about just now. Real estate compete with one another to obtain listings for sale. They often cooperate with one another to secure buyers for those listings. This cooperation, which is what you're talking about, can present opportunities for violation of the Antitrust Act. Okay? So basically, it's people getting together to eliminate competition, which would raise the prices for the, for the public. Right. So there's different ways they could do this. They have price fixing, group boycotting, inbound commission splits, tying agreements, allocation of customers or markets, which is what you were talking about, that last one. It's allocation of customers or markets. Okay? Now, these details may or may not come on the exam, but we're going to go over them because they might. But even if they don't come up, you will come away knowing the gist of this whole act, so you'll definitely get any questions right on your exam that show up regarding this. Right. So the first one is price fixing. What does that sound like to you? What is price fixing all about? Um, I want to say price fixing is, okay, one uh, real estate group is making one thing higher or lower based on another real estate uh, group group's prices, or am I wrong? Well, let's say there's three hamburger shops in your town. And hamburgers are, what, $5 a hamburger? Mm-hmm. Okay. But all three of them get together like, hey, guys, got a great idea. Let's charge $100 for hamburgers. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. All right. And make sure everybody's on the same page because anybody goes and charge $5, you're going to screw our little thing here, and then the public will pay 5 Oh, so it's I, – I, I think I remember. It's with the um, – where you're discussing, like, commission. Right. Like the agent can't discuss the commissions like, oh, I get paid this and this at this realty. And then another agent comes and says exactly what they get paid. And then they like. Um, you do me a favor. Huh? Can you do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Can you read that last paragraph out loud? The brokers and agents challenge is to avoid even the impression of price fixing. Hinting to prospective clients that there is a going rate of commission or a normal fee implies that rates are indeed standardized. The broker must make it clear to clients that the rate stated is only what his or her firm charges. Is that not exactly what you were talking about? Yes, that is. <laughs> yeah. So you were spot on with what you were saying. Okay. People do it all the time. 6%, 5%, whatever the local community dictates. They make it sound like everybody has to do that. Anybody who goes below that is is basically violating rules when they're not. Right. You will hear a lot of times, age charge 6%, then one will charge 4%. All the other ages get very angry. And you'll see this as you go on to practice real estate. And people violate this all the time. The other ages get very angry that another agent is charging 4% or 3%. That's a violation right. of the Antitrust Act. Agents try and keep everything, generally speaking, and this is not on the exam, this is just general practice, so you can understand for, you know, passing. They like to say 6%, 5% if you must. They generally don't like to go below that. Right. And they got to be very careful, although that might be general practice or whatever it is, if it comes across like they're enforcing that, they're in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Right. That not that's not much different than my hamburger example. Right. Okay. So if we look at this example, Sunshine Brokerage and Rainbow Brokerage agreed to charge all their clients six percent. Sunshine Brokerage and Rainbow Brokerage and Moonbeam Brokerage agree to pay a set amount to outside brokers for any referral. Broker Joan tells her brokerage that 6% on all their listings and that all other brokers are charged the same amount, and that's standard. If that's true, that's a violation of the Antitrust Act. Right. You see what they're doing? They're saying, yeah, everything's 6%. That's what, that's what happens here. We're all on the same page. Much right. Like so nobody won't get any more business than the other. Right. Exactly. And that violates free market. The whole purpose of the Sherman Antitrust Act is to uh, promote free market trade. 
competition. Right. Okay, conspiracy um, to boycott. We'll bust through these pretty quickly. What do you think that's about? When you hear the word boycott, what is it? I do not know. I forgot. I'm not even going to lie. I forgot. It's okay. Basically, it's when, um, you know, it, it, real estate agents have to work together, correct? Right. When you have a seller, there has to be a buyer. So what if all the agents got together and said, you know what, Ray is new in the business. Let's all get together and hate her. But I say, I don't even know Ray. Joe, if you're not on page with us, we're going to boycott you too. D don't worry, <laughs> it's Ray, right? I'll be like, oh, okay, I guess so. And now nobody's working with you. We collectively got together to say, screw her. She's not good. If she brings a buyer, her buyer's hosed. Tough for her. Is that okay? Right. Okay. No, it's not okay. Yeah. And I, I phrase it like that because sometimes thinking of these things in the most simple way will help you understand. You know, when right. you're doing these complex ways and realistic scenarios, sometimes it just makes things complicated. But right. that's all it is. It's all of us are getting together and be like, ugh, another new agent. Let's hate her. What do you guys think? Well, I'm not sure. Hate her. Okay. Okay. I'll hate her. You know? And we all get together and don't work with you. So we're boycotting you. Okay, so here we have. Over lunch meeting, Agent Albert from Sunshine Realty and Agent Ben from Moonbeam Realty agree not to show the listings of Meadow Realty. They further state if no other brokers will show Meadow Realty listings, then Meadow should be out of business in no time. That's kind of what I was talking about with saying you're new to the business. We'll say, you know what? All the new agents, nobody work with them. They'll be out. We're threatened by new agents. We've been here for 20 years, so everybody get together and say, screw them. All right. And you may see that with certain towns where agents have been there forever, and they don't want – they want to make it very difficult for new agents. So there's kind of this old boys club or old women's club where everybody knows each other for a long time, and they kind of make a pact to be difficult to new agents when they bring their buyers. Right. And it's a way to kind of keep things amongst the people who've been there for a while and make it very hard to break into the business. Mm. And that would be a violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Inbound commission splits is when you are changing your commission split based upon, you know, how you feel at a certain time. You're not keeping it steady. Okay, tie-in agreements are agreements. No tie-ins are. Okay, tell me what tie-ins are. Go for it. Um, a tie-in arrangement is like basically if okay if somebody is selling this house um, and they say, well, you can't get this property unless you buy this property too. Excellent. Good. Then I go to but, but Ray, I like that property and I don't want another property. Then you say, well, too bad. Right? <laughs> right. Then I say, violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Okay? Right. It's definitely a violation. Right. And you'll see it all the time as you practice real estate. You can only buy this property if you get that one. I mean, it's not ice cream, a two for one. <laughs> right. Allocation of customer markets has to do with, Ray, you stay over there. I'll stay over here. I won't bother you if you're over there, and you won't bother me if I'm over here. That could be a problem. And all this revolves around, all these different things revolve around the same premise, which is you want to increase competition because that's how prices stay down. If you do one of these things, price fixing, group boycotting, inbounds, commission split, tie-in agreements, or allocation of customer markets, you're falsely inflating the prices. It's not based upon competition. It's based upon people basically cheating. Yeah, cheating other people or cheating on prices. Exactly. Cheating other people, cheating other prices. Yeah, and you see with big companies all the time, like talk about you know Facebook having this big conglomerate monopolizing everything. I mean, the part of our economy, actually a large part of our economy, is based upon there being competition. Now we have fair housing. Okay, so fair housing... First thing you have to know is Jones versus Mayer. If you don't remember anything else, 
Can you please remember this? Ready? Mm hmm. 1968 Fair Housing. Okay. I don't care what they ask you on your exam. If you see the number 1968, circle it. You got it? Got it. I don't care if it says, why is the sky blue? 1968. Why are my shoes brown? 1968. Where were you? <laughs> you know, whatever it is, circle 1968. Promise? Got you. Okay. Because if you know your history, 1968 is a huge year when you're talking about um, civil rights, you know, fair housing, racial discrimination. It was big time. Do you know any things that happened in 1968? Um, when the law passed to, no, um, I'm wrong. Okay, well, let me Isn't start that... here. There was probably, arguably, the most famous assassination in our country's history happened in 1968. Um, am I okay getting shot? Yes, yeah, say it a little more confidently. Am I okay getting shot? Okay. Right. That was huge. And that's <coughs> and not by coincidence. A lot of the stuff we're going to talk about now happened following that assassination. For example, oh. Lyndon Johnson signed the Fair Housing a week after he was assassinated, right? A week after Martin Luther King was assassinated. So mm -hmm. 1968 was an enormous year in our country's history, and therefore it's also the answer to your exam. Okay, so... So you promise you're going to remember 1968? Yeah, I got you. 1968. And Jones versus Mayer happened 1968. Jones versus Alfred H. Mayer is a 1968 Supreme Court case which held that Congress could regulate the sale of private property in order to prevent racial discrimination based upon the 13th Amendment. So we got to back up and get a little bit into history here. Okay? Mm -hmm. In the South... Prior to this, private property, they were able to say, those people can live here, those people live there, done. Correct? Mm hmm So this ruling said, not anymore. Because now, they were saying, even on private property, you cannot discriminate based upon the 13th Amendment. Do you know what the 13th Amendment was all about? Um, no. It was right after the Civil War. I'm sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, okay, don't worry. 13th Amendment. Okay, read that. Okay. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery. Right, big one. We learned in our history classes when we were little. 13th Amendment was a big-time amendment, right? Civil War. So this was based upon... The 13th Amendment. He's a followed up about that racial equality concept. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes perfect sense. Right. So when they ask you, and this could come on your exam, what amendment was this based upon? Which one is it? The 13th. And it's one thing to remember the 13th, but if you remember why the 13th or what the 13th is all about, it'll make it easier for you to get it right in your exam. Because you should remember, well, the 13th is the one that had to do with racial equalities. It's the big one that abolished slavery. It's the one that Lincoln enacted right after the Civil War. That was a big one. <coughs> right. So here it is. Fair housing. Congress passed the Fair Housing Act one week after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. on April 11th, 1968. The 1968 expand on previous acts prohibiting discrimination on race, religion, national origin, sex as amended, handicapped, family status concerning the sale, rental, and financing of housing. It's important you note this paragraph because many people get this wrong with their exam because they think fair housing stops at race. Right. But it also has to do with people who are single or married. Okay. Um national origin, male or female, so it goes beyond that. Okay, so I really want you to make note of this last paragraph, or this last That's part. Great. Yeah, that it goes well beyond race. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. 
Okay, when you talk about fair housing, you might see these words. Right. Have you ever heard of them before? Mm-hmm. What do you know about them? Um, well, redlining is when different um, loan officers or banks uh, decide who who they want to give loans to based on where they live or, you know, what kind of town it is. Right. So that one, let's keep the word financing in mind because you're right. Okay. Um, panic paddling, panic selling. Well, I don't know what is. Is that supposed to be the same thing? Yep. Panic peddling. Okay. Good. <clears throat> um, it's when like an agent would say, "Oh, you better hurry up and move because the minorities are moving in," or right. something like. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I give the webinars, I say it like this. I say, "You better sell because those people are moving to town. You don't want to live by those people, do you?" Right. You know that kind of slander. It's like, ugh. You don't want to live by them. You know what happens when those people move down. You know, the values go, blah, 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 and everything turns horrible. Okay? Right. So panic selling, blockbusting, and panic selling all have to do with sellers. Right. Okay? There's one mm-hmm. more concept that comes up. Steering. Yes. How are you going to remember this one? Um, this one, I I remember, basically, it's if an agent tries to steer you in one neighborhood, like, okay, say it's a Chinese person, so she, he or she, whoever the agent is, takes you only to predominantly Chinese neighborhoods because they feel like that would be a better fit, or... Right, right, right. And that could be offensive to that person, because they're like, I didn't want to live there. You know, I actually moved here because I want to acclimate with other cultures, et cetera, et cetera. But the right. one I want to remember is I try and keep these words really simple. And I go over this in my webinars, try and narrow things down to one word memory techniques. Mm-hmm. The redlining, financing, other sellers, steering, buyers. And steering is really easy. You just think about steering a car. Right. So steering has to do with um, I'm showing you around. I should be like, Ray, you're one of those people. You should live here. But I want to live. Oh, come on. You know you like living here with your people, right? <laughs> right. Okay? Because even if that might be true, you're going to be like, that's not for you to say. I'll tell you where I want to live. Right. Okay. So steering has to do with buyers, and these have to do with sellers, and redlining has to do with financing. And you were correct, had to do with geography. The root of this word literally had to do with somebody took a red pen and drew it on a map and said, mm-hmm. we're not lending here. All right. And, but, and the reason I say it has to do with discrimination because they were picking that ge- geography based upon certain qualities of ethnicity, race, religion, all that kind of stuff. Right. So it's illegal, violates fair housing. All right, you want to try some questions in the last part of this webinar? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's see what we got here. Mike Coogan, a new real estate per salesperson, made strong efforts to obtain listings in a non-integrated community. He found success by insinuating to property owners that should minority minorities move into the area, the value of their homes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the value of their homes would decrease. Which of the following terms best describes the activities of salesperson Coogan? Okay. Well, it would. So first off, are we dealing with buyers or sellers here? We're dealing with sellers. So, which words? What does steering have to deal with? Um, steering has to deal with buyers. What about the other two? Um. Both have to do with sellers. Therefore? Oh, so it would be D. There you go. Good. So blockbusting, just really, really quick. It's basically the same thing. It is. There are differences if you research it thoroughly, you know, through, you know, uh, textbooks and whatnot. But for your purposes, it's basically the same thing. Okay. Okay? Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Which of the following is the purpose of the Federal Truth in Lending Act? 
Um, terms. A, to limit interest rates. B, to regulate fees charged by lenders. C, to assure a meaningful disclosure of credit terms. I'm going to go with D, all of the above. Okay. So this one is what? to ensure meaningful disclosure of credit terms. Do you remember our discussion about usury? Yes. And I said that truth in lending doesn't monitor that. The states monitor that. Oh, yeah. You did. You you did. You did. You did. Yeah. You did. So be careful on that one. Because that was when I was saying the states monitor that, not the um, truth in lending. Right. And the correct answer, the purpose of the Federal Truth in Lending Act is to assure consumers. The truth in lending really doesn't have to do with um, regulating interest rates or fees. Truth in lending really has to do with just disclosure, making sure everything's disclosed. Disclosure. Okay. Yeah. The states individually will get into the interest rates and fees. Right, right, the right. Truth I just got to be more federal. careful. Okay, so does that make sense? That was a tricky one. Yes. Okay. Here, forget this question. What's the answer? 1968. Okay, what's the question? Who cares what the question is? We're sort of playing 1968, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other year that matters on your exam. Right. I don't even know what the other years are. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? It might as well be like 1352. Right. Okay. 1968. Okay. All right. But it does say in which the years the U.S. Supreme Court prohibit all discrimination when real property is sold or rented. And that had to do with that Jones versus Mayer case. Right that we were alluding to before. That's what they're referencing, the Jones versus Mayer case. That was a Supreme Court case you had asked me about. Okay? Alrighty. You want me to read it out loud? Yeah, read it out loud so people listening could um, hear the question. Not everybody's seeing this. They might just be listening. Discrimination in the sale or rental of residential housing accommodations based on sex, marital status, color, religion, race, or national or origin of the prospective tenant or buyer is unenforceable. I'm going to go with all of the above because that basically just the last question answered that. So, Yes. Well, don't. You circle all the above because you think that's the right answer. Not because, well, last time all of the above was right, so maybe this time it is. Or, you know. Right, right, right. Double right, test right. how many times you circle all of the above. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, perfect. Good. We're moving here. All right. Commission's rate price fixing is a violation of the A, truth in lending. B, Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, C, Antitrust Laws, or D, Employment and Housing Act. Um, well, it definitely can't be D um, or A. So I will go with the C, Antitrust Laws. Yeah, you should have got that one faster because we did that whole thing about price fixing, right? Right. So that's that Sherman Antitrust Laws we did that whole thing about, remember? Mm -hmm. A material fact that must be disclosed to a purchaser would include all of the following except um, A, a leaky roof, B, a septic tank, C, the racial composition of the neighborhood, or D, plans for a nearby freeway. Um, C. Excellent. So material facts are things like leaky roofs, septic tanks, freeways. Racial composition is not only not a material fact, but it violates the fair housing laws. Okay? And here's my question for you. If you are saying that, what are you doing? Are you block busting, panic putting, redlining, or steering? Steering. Excellent. No, no, no. Yes. Well, yeah, that too. And wouldn't it be um, pa panic uh, peddling? No, because you're the purchaser, a buyer. Okay. You have a buyer. 
Remember, the other had to do with sellers. Right. The federal fair housing law provides for a United States policy of elim A, eliminating prejudice wherever it exists in the United States, B, providing fair housing for all persons throughout the United States, C, building housing units designed primarily for minority groups throughout the United States, or D, guaranteeing separate but equal housing units for all people in all of the states. I'm going to go with B. Excellent. Good. Okay. All right, moving right along. So B, provide fair housing for all persons throughout the United States. Good. Mm -hmm. The right of rescission under the Truth in Lending would apply to A, a home equity loan, B, an agriculture loan, C, purchase money loan, or D, none of the above. I'm going to go with... Um, Good. Yay. Excellent. Okay, home equity loan. So you're doing great. You're going to totally do well. Um, a broker convinces a white family to put their home up for sale after saying that minority families are moving into the neighborhood. The broker's actions are all of the following except A, blockbusting, B, panic selling, C, legal, D, legal but unethical. I'm going to go with D. Good. Because it violates that federal fair housing state law, correct? Right. Yeah. So good. So that's not only unethical, but it's illegal. And like I said, it's blockbusting, panic selling, panic selling, all that kind of stuff. Correct. The fundamental basis for fair housing throughout the United States stems from A, the First Amendment of the Constitution, B, the National Association of Fair Housing, C, the 13th Amendment of the Constitution, D, the Bad Treatment Fair Housing Act. I'm going to go with C. Excellent. The 13th Amendment of the well, Constitution. What's the 13th Amendment? It was when slavery was abolished. Good. Excellent. And you see what I mean? It's one thing to just remember the 13th Amendment, but if you actually know what the 13th Amendment is, it's a lot easier to remember. Right, which it, which it was. Right. It's also one of those you kind of want to know in your American history, right? Right. <laughs> it's one of those you felt like, I should probably know that anyway. Right, I should have <laughs> known that. Like, okay, Joe, you put me on the spot. Right. Okay, here we go. Boom, 13th Amendment. Okay. Which of the following is the most commonly used credit rating system? A, uh, DACO, B, um, RESPA, the C, FICO, and D, FDIC. Which of the following is the most commonly used credit rating system? I'm going to go with FICO. Good. We didn't go over that one, but it's definitely one you should know. The FICO score is how they evaluate your credit. Mm hmm. Well, I knew it couldn't be the FDIC or RESPA, and I didn't even know what DACA was. Excellent. So your thinking was perfect. You're like, we haven't gone over this. I haven't gotten a loan yet myself, so this is all kind of new to me. But I right. know we went over what RESPA is. I know what FDIC is. I've never heard of A. So I'm going to go logic. It should be FICO, and that's correct. Okay, it's a credit rating system. Okay. Perfect. A credit rating system. So your way you went about that, analyzing that question was great, and that's why you're going to pass. Yay. All of the following would require a RESPA disclosure statement except – a, a loan made by a savings and loan. B, a loan made by a private individual. C, a home loan made by a commercial bank. D, a loan capable of being sold to Fannie Mae. I'm going to go with B. Excellent. A lot of people get that wrong. I'm happy you got it right. Because you think, let's think of those most simple terms. 
Okay. If mm-hmm. I lend you 10 bucks to go get a hamburger, um, am I being monitored by RESPA? No. No. Think about what a private individual is. I know they're not referring to lend 10 bucks on a hamburger, but on the simplest level, that's all it is. Private individuals me to you. Right. There's no banks. There doesn't have to be licenses involved, anything. So RESPA is not going to monitor that. Exactly. Okay. All right. Under the Truth in Lending Act, Regulation Z, which of the following need not be included in the total finance charge required as part of the disclosure statement? A, commissions or finder's fees to lenders, B, cost of credit report and appraisal fee, C, premium for FHA life insurance, or D, loan origination fee. Okay. Um, give me one second. I'm about to figure it out. I'm not sure it's going to be a hint. Not be included in the total. I'm going to go with commissions or finder's fees to I'm going to go with either A or B. A B. or B. Okay, because that's an outside service. Okay. All right. So that's not part of that loan fee. Okay, let's do this last one. A broker mentioned um, the APR in one of his ads, but did not include any other financing terms. This ad was A, okay, under RESPA, B, a RESPA violation, C, a violation of regulation, C, D, a violation of the Truth in Lending Act. It's A, because as long as it has the APR, then it's perfectly fine. That is awesome. I definitely want to end on that. I did not think you were going to get that correct, but you totally surprised me, which is great. And I'm very happy you got that right, because most people go to violation, 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 but that shows you understood what the APR was all about. It showed me that you understood that APR is an all-inclusive thing. Right. So that was awesome that you got that correct. Yes, and I've been doing my little test. Yeah. So I think we went over a lot of good stuff today. What do you think? I think we went over some great stuff. And actually, I, I, I honestly didn't know about this stuff, and you didn't have any other videos on none of, none of the, these topics that we went over. Yeah, no, that's why when you asked me about this, it took me a little longer to prepare because I haven't done a lot of it before. And I'm also very happy you did ask me to do it. So all good things. Hopefully it helped. And for now, uh, this is Joe, prep agent, with my friend Ray. Hi. Uh, <laughs> well, bye. Yeah. yeah, bye. Signing off. And if anybody has any questions, make sure you write it below and we'll see what I can get. And correct me if I say anything wrong. I'm not perfect. and I'm always open to feedback. Thanks, everybody. Bye.